Yeah. Hello, my name is Dr. Dale Caldwell. I'm host of Family Business World. I'm happy to welcome you today to our, our first show. Um, family businesses represent about 60% of the gross domestic product in the United States, 60% of the employees in the country currently, but 78% of the new employees. And so we're here to celebrate family businesses. And I'm so happy to have on my first show a friend and, and uh, a, an outstanding family business leader, Debbie Schaefer, the CEO of Mrs. G's. That's Welcome. That's so kind of you, Dale. I'm so happy to be here. Yeah. Well, you're a legend. You're a legend. Oh, wow. it's, it's an honor to have you here. So uh, to kick off the show, yeah. we're, 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 we're so pleased to, to have you. Yes, thank you. The, uh, so t let's, uh, let, let's let the audience know a little bit about Mrs. G. How old is it? What's the history of the organization? Okay, so Mrs. G is an appliance store, a community-based appliance store, and we're in central New Jersey. So to give everybody an idea, everybody knows Princeton, Princeton, New Jersey. So we're just a little south of Princeton, but we're just on the border, so from Pennsylvania. A lot of our customers are from New Jersey and also Pennsylvania. So we sell all different uh, brands of appliances, a beautiful showroom, and but I say we're we're just not an appliance store. We're we're we we have an experience. Mm -hmm. We we love to um, bring a lot of um, um, uh, chamber um, you know, events at the store. We love to host. We have a beautiful kitchen, working kitchens in well, our. But, but you're being modest. That, that is probably one of the most beautiful stores in New Jersey. Yes, yeah, it really yes. is. And so I, I don't care Very if proud. I don't care if you need appliances or not. You have to go to the store right. in Lawrenceville. Yeah. And so and so you're doing events there. So right. you're really we doing do some a lot events. of events. So okay. and uh, but we've been in business 84 years. 84 How years. How about that? Unbelievable. Yeah, but, but, so, but, so but proud. You, you, you haven't been there for 84 years, but, but you've been in business that long. been in business. My grandmother right. and grandfather uh, started the business in 1935 in Trenton. In Trenton, New, New Jersey. Okay. Trenton, New Jersey. Okay. And, um, so your grandmother was Mrs. G? Mrs. G. Okay. And my grandfather was Mr. G. Mr. G. Mr. Yes. and Mrs. G. Right? Yes. And uh, Beatrice and Abe Greenberg. Wonderful. And um, always called Mr. and Mrs. G. Mm -hmm. And... But my grandmother was the face of the business. Right, right. She was right. really the one that was on the floor and um, loved the community. She read like all the newspapers. She knew what was going on um, all the time. And it was originally called New Jersey Plumbing because back in 1935, right, with, right. they had ice boxes. Right, right, right. right? They had <laughs> stoves. Right. Um, now they're called refrigerators and ranges. <laughs> um, and then, um, so started off with plumbing, right. mostly plumbing right. and appliances. And then after the war, um, and appliances started to evolve, the dishwasher mm -hmm. came came out. Um, it was New Jersey Plumbing and Appliances. Okay, okay. Um, but I would say in the 50s, uh, because my grandmother was so much a part of the community, everybody right. knew who they were. Right. Um, uh, she was they, an unelected politician, and basically. And she was, in Trent, right. you know, the, the face of the business. Right. Um, so right. not only did they change it to Mrs. G, and my grandfather was so about that. Right, right, he, right, he adored her. Right. Uh, so um, face of the business, her face uh -huh. was part of the logo. Right, right, right. And, um, and they called it Mrs. G, New Jersey Plumbing and Appliances, and right. Mrs. G. Yeah, um, and then we slowly moved out of the plumbing and, and really focused on appliances. Wonderful. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, but yes, now, yes. now I, I hear there were stories of, of uh, uh, layaway before there was layaway oh, that, that yes. your, your mom for, for people of all colors and backgrounds. Absolutely. So tell, tell a little there, about that. You know, there's really not a day that doesn't go by. Now, of course, we're into the third generations right. of families, but where people would come in and, and they would say, I remember um, your grandmother so vividly because mm. my parents, when they first came, to this area from another country right, from right. or they were just in need and couldn't afford that my grandmother would sit them down right. want to know all about them right, right took a couple of minutes and then they would walk right, out right. with whatever they needed five dollars a week whatever it was and so you know, she was like a loan officer for was, the appliances she really kind of looked would at the, say the that face she, and credit people would say there was a very well-known um pizza 
parlor in uh, Pennington, New Jersey, right. and um, he he approached me and he said, "Your grandmother was the first one that gave me credit." Wow! Wow! I mean, you know, wow. it was amazing. The, what, uh, just a wonderful story. The, and uh, see, that's the kind of history that's so important because even now, banks won't give character loans. Right. You know, they you know it all has that's, to be on, and 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 this country was made with character loans, exactly and family businesses right. did did yes, that. So yes. so you've evolved, and and then your mom became the next generation, or, or my, my, and, my my mother, my mother grew up over the business. You know, right, back in right. the day, you had the business on the first floor. You lived on the second right, floor, right. and um, so she grew up and she worked very hard. She was really part of the marketing. Um, when they opened the new store in uh, Lawrence Township back in 1971, okay. I mean, she was all about the events. Right, she knew right. how to bring people in. She did a lot of the advertising, um, and uh, but you know she you know, uh, was ready to move to Florida right, early right. on. And, uh, but she was, she gave her a good part of her yeah. life working. And, uh, so, but my grandmother was there till she was. Oh, really? So, so she, she was, she was still a presence in the background. she was 95. Really? Yes, the, yes, uh, yes. Well, now yes. let's talk about you. So, so you started when you were a young, a young lady in the business. When did you first kind of start working there? Well, actually, um, I've really only officially worked there for the last 20 years. Really? Okay. Um, okay. I uh, went to the University of Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, I was always very good in math and science uh -huh. and got an engineering degree. Wow. And I went into high-rise construction, okay. uh, construction management, um, and uh, uh, but was very, very close to my grandmother. Right, right. And, uh, did, you, did you think you might get in the business when you were younger? Or did, Actually, or did you just say, I, I don't want to do this, I want to be an engineer, or what? what yeah, exactly, what, I mean, right. uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wasn't really because business was just on its own, and right. my grandmother was there, and everything was fine, and I was living in New York City like right. a lot of people like to do when uh, when they're young. And uh, um, but then I, I started a family mm -hmm. and took some time off, and mm -hmm. then when the girls, I have beautiful twin girls, mm -hmm. and when they um, uh, went into kindergarten, right. was right. looking to get back to work, mm -hmm. and my grandmother says. This is time, right, you know. Right. You know, we have to decide what to do with the business. Right, right. Um, I'd like you to see if this is something you would like to do. I would like to be with you, right. and um, and we took it slow, and I think she knew exactly what she was doing. Right, right. She knew. Uh, <laughs> well, it's it's funny, and, and and the audience will hear as we go through these stories that the whole plan of succession. It's amazing how often the person that's leading the the next generation had no interest or idea that they would be in it. Right. They go off on a, and, and what I'm seeing is, uh, because as you know, I'm the executive director of the Fairleigh Dickinson University Rothman Institute of Innovation and Entrepreneurship, right. and family businesses is one of our focuses. So we're interacting with family businesses literally around the world, that there are some patterns, and it's almost best for people not to go right into the business, to see that world out there and start to realize, exactly. you know, this family business thing is actually much cooler than I, than I, than I thought. Is that kind of what you experienced? Well, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I, I brought a lot of insight, you yeah, know, right, to, to right. the store. Exactly. You know, I came into a time where I call it the Walmart effect, mm, you know, where mm. there was a lot of pressure going on um, with the business, the independent appliance store, when you had Walmart, Home Depot, Lowe's, Best Buy, and they just don't bring one store. Right. You know, they bring, they bring five stores right. within your, right. you know, delivery area. Yeah. And it was a lot of pressure, and a lot of market share was taken. And um, I brought a lot of fresh ideas to the store, and um, I was so glad that my grandmother, you know, was willing, you know, to let me do some of the things. Some, most things worked, right? Because we're still here. Right. But some things didn't, right. and you need to just move on. You learn from it and move on. Entrepreneurs know failure is part of the process. Absolutely. You, you, if you're not, if you're too scared to fail, you're guaranteed right. to fail. Right. Exactly. And so, so, so let's talk about that because again, you're legendary. Mrs. G is legendary, not just in Central Jersey, but but really in in the tri-state area, largely because you've beaten the big box. You've beaten the system that these big companies and government gives tax breaks and all sorts of things to big companies. And in so many places, they've closed out the family businesses, which is really why I want to do this yeah, show. Right. It's to kind of let people know their family business here, support them. But, but how did you do it? What were some of the tricks of the trade that, got, that, that allowed you to survive and beat those big chains with all this money? Well, the most important is when you're in a commodity business, mm -hmm. that's pretty much where, mm -hmm. where we are, is, mm -hmm. you know, what, how, how do we do it about right. price? Right. Right. And it's right. being a member of one of the largest buying groups in mm -hmm. the country, and we're, you know, which is in the Northeast, it's um, the NECO, mm -hmm. um, and then um, and then NECO, which is a, is a member of another 
another huge buying group, which is $15 billion wow. in buying power. Wow. And so we collectively, this independence from all over, they independently um, buy General Electric, they'll buy Whirlpool, mm. um, BSH, Samsung, uh, LG, uh, collectively $15 billion wow. in buying power. Wow. So price, we can compete on price. Because right. at the end of the day, that's the most, right. 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 But then how do you differentiate differentiate yourself from the competition. Mm -hmm. And that's um, giving outstanding, um, what I call customer experience. Right. Um, customer experience before, mm -hmm. during the sale, mm -hmm. and then, but most important is after the sale. Right, right. It's the whole 360. And how do we do that? With you know, a fabulous staff that we have. Um, uh, and um, on the sales side, which is what you see, mm -hmm. but there's, we have 20, one store, we have 23 full-time employees. Really? I wow. mean, it's a depth wow. of um, really, really great uh, team um, to, again, get that 360 of retail and give a great customer experience yeah. throughout that. And uh, a beautiful showroom, mm -hmm. as we talked about, a great selection, always up to date. Right. Uh, um, but I would say early on, um, I was um, uh, into social media right, a lot right, earlier right, than than right. most. So on the marketing side, I think that that helped, you know, to, mm -hmm. to get me out there. And I was always very part of the you know right. community. I, I brought chamber events before. You know, you have to be out there, mm -hmm. one on one relationships. Right. Yeah. Well, so so let, let's let's talk about before we get to the community, but the social media presence. I mean, you yeah. are really legendary for uh, for being out there, and so and you did it before anybody else did that. I know you've you've had some. Well, not experts. before anybody else. Well, but well, well before <laughs> well, as far as appliance stores, but appliance hey, stores, you probably were ahead stores, of again. Yeah. Appliance stores, most of them are kind of they're old yeah, school. Yeah. Right, and so you you really were ahead of your industry right, in doing that. Right. And so, so what's your strategy? I mean, what's your, and I'm sure it's evolved over time, but what's what's the social media strategy? Because you you're out there all the time. Right, right. Well, uh, uh, so I first started on Twitter, and uh -huh. uh, not too long ago, I got a happy anniversary from a happy anniversary tweet right. from Twitter because it's been ten years. Ten so years. Two thousand and nine. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I started on Twitter, and then. Um, and went on all these other social sites. But um, I think being early on, mm -hmm. you really learn how to use them right. um, because as they evolve, it mm -hmm. gets more complicated. Right. Um, but you know, each has its own way. But again, that's where everybody's eyes are. Right. Right. So, because right. I go into some of these events in, around town and they go, I see you everywhere. Right. Right. And right. where do they see me? They see right. me on LinkedIn, they see me on Facebook, they see me on Instagram. So you're, 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 you're a celebrity. You're, you're, store. Yeah, you're, you're a legend. So we're gonna take a, a, a short break now and then we'll come okay. back and we'll yeah. talk some more about yeah. social media. Yeah. A woman without a lot of time. Whether you're a gourmet cook or just want to eat like one, visit Rostelli Market Fresh, your home for the freshest locally sourced ingredients to please everyone who loves great food. Our organic meats, quality seafood, and free-range poultry are cut fresh to order. Chefs create culinary-inspired prep foods made fresh every day, which pair nicely with our vast selection of fine wines and spirits. Choose from handmade pastas, artisan cheeses, organic produce, and grocery items, all from the finest purveyors. Rostelli Market Fresh, from our family to yours. RVN TV is a platform for people of any industry to share their story. Over 285,000 viewers are tuning in to RVN TV shows monthly. We guarantee a great experience that you'll be sharing with everyone you know while increasing your personal and company's brand awareness. But what is your brand? According to Forbes, it's a combination of your logo, your product, your design and feel, and your personality. Did you know that aside from being a guest, we offer even more opportunity to boost your brand? Adding your company logo and website on screen during your interview will allow viewers to recognize your brand instantly. Incorporating images and video clips is another great way to showcase your product during your live segment. Let viewers see how good you really are. And most importantly, there's you and your interview. For less than the cost of a newspaper, direct mail, or a magazine ad, 
you can leave our studio and within 48 hours have a permanent digital copy of your live segment to link to your social media, embed into your company website, or use in email marketing. Investing in your brand is so very important, and we can't wait to have you as a guest. Shelter dogs aren't broken. They've simply experienced more life. Every great company has a mission. And at Mrs. G, ours is to sell products and services that make life better. When you visit us, you'll experience a showroom filled with brands you know and love. Our products help you cook better, clean better, wash better, and grill better. We currently have over 250 online reviews with an average of 4.6 out of 5 stars. So check out what your neighbors have to say about Mrs. G. After all, they're our neighbors too. I want to thank you for being the founding sponsor of Family Business World, of this right. show where we're going to celebrate all sorts of different family businesses. And uh, the audience got, got to see in the commercial your wonderful showroom. I mean, it really is one of the most beautiful showrooms. <laughs> and, you know, I'm, and I'm not overstating it. And so I say, you know, whether you need appliances or not, just go there. You know, I've done work with the sales staff. They're warm, they're friendly, and it's, 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 it's something you don't get with some of the, big, the bigger, bigger entities. So, um, and so the social media has helped you with that presence. You do some videos and other things about how to do certain things with appliances. Talk a little bit about that. Well, yeah, so um, well, one of the biggest things uh, when you're replacing a refrigerator is you need to take some measurements. Right, right. Um, many people come in and go, oh, our refrigerator is this big and this tall. Well, uh, okay, <laughs> that doesn't really work. And then we send them home and to take measurements. So now when you're looking on our website and they're looking at different refrigerators, they'll see that you can how to measure a refrigerator, you click that on, a video of me comes up, and I really show them it's 15, maybe maybe 30 seconds wow. uh, long, but uh, gives you the right tools. So, you know, it makes uh, an easier and stress-free process of, of replacing refrigerators or dishwashers, et cetera. So video has been very, very helpful, but social media in general, I have this story that I, I've told before is um, uh, back in 2010, I get this call from Carol Campbell, who um, it, who created Women in Consumer Electronics, mm, okay, and uh, is starting this big organization back in 2010. She lives in California. Uh -huh, uh -huh. They're creating an awards ceremony, giving out five awards to the, the leaders of uh, Women in Consumer Electronics, and she says, "We're honoring you. You're gonna, you're an award winner." Wow. How, wow. how did they do that? She's in California. And we're a community business, but she read about our story. Wonderful. How did she find Wonderful. our story? Because I'm considered a thought leader mm -hmm. in my industry through Twitter. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, it was back in 2010. Um, you know, a lot of us were, were talking together about what was going on on Twitter. And, um, and so uh, that's what I'm saying. You know, the social media, it gets you out there right. for people all, across the country can find you and then you know they do a little bit more research and learn about you so um, social media has been great um, there's there, there's rules you know that you have to go by and right. I say I say that lightly meaning you know you can't you can't you know, be too salesy, salesy, you can't salesy right. you know yeah, you're too salesy, um, right. and uh, you, you know and then you do you with on Instagram is different than on LinkedIn. LinkedIn right. is amazing today. If you're not on LinkedIn, yeah, yeah, you need yeah, to be on LinkedIn. It. It's yeah, it's it. the new Facebook. Yeah, it's, it really is. It's it really very, is. and business. I've learned so much from LinkedIn. And that's one of the things I loved about Twitter right. is that uh, I always loved the fact that I, I knew about launches and new products before my reps did in right. their own world right, right. because I'm reading it on Twitter first. Right, right. So, the, yeah. uh, well, and, and again, as, as I said, I'm, I'm uh, you know, running the Rothman Institute at Fairly Dickinson University, and uh, but I also have a consulting firm around family business, and I had a chance to work with you around the time you won the, the Rothman Institute, before I even knew what the Fairleigh Dickinson That's Rothman right, Institute was right. in 2012, That's amazing. you won the Family what Business of world. the Year Award, yes. which, which again, congratulations. Um, and so social media was part of it, but you really have just done your presence and, and what you've done in the culture of the organization. And, and, and one of the things we want to we make sure that, that folks understand on this show is that, you know, so often, you know, we think we're saving some money by going online. 
But the research is showing that look, maybe two cents out of the dollar comes back to the community or even helps to reduce taxes. But when you support a local family business, right. like Mrs. G, and you go in and you buy the appliance, it's much more than the quality product that you have. It's giving back to the community. It's doing a lot for the community. It's, it's, it's really supporting folks. So, so you've been a face of the Trenton, Lawrenceville, Princeton community for a long time, and you've really partnered with some groups. Some of the, what are some of the initiatives you, you've been working on? Well, uh, just lately now, I'm working on um, uh, with the Mer Mercer County Technical School. Mm, I have okay. this, you know, we, there's such a shortage mm -hmm. for, um, you know, in the trades right, right now. Right. So um, I just had a fundraiser at the store, it was, was wonderful. Um, skilled Labor Fund raised Ooh. some money for right. that, which is. Um, our industry, the National Kitchen and Bath mm -hmm. Association and the Home Builders Association have come together to create the Skilled Labor Fund, and this is to generate money to go back to the technical schools oh, around the country oh, um, and to you know, really start to uh, have more opportunity there, mm -hmm. and um, especially girls, right, to tell right, girls right, you right, can't do any of these right, things. Right. Yeah, um, and uh, so that's something, um, Skills USA, which is part of the, the trade schools. Um, so I'm always working, Dress for Success yeah, was right. uh, 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 last night that I support. Mm -hmm. We talked about the chambers. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and, and yeah. you've, done, you've done so much in the presence. And, 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 and the thing about, about you and Mrs. G is you, you give a lot of money behind the scenes. It's not, it's not publicly, you don't do it for great headlines right, and other things. Right. And so let's talk about, you've been very active for young women. I have a 15 year old daughter, Ashley, Ashley Caldwell. And so she's looking at her careers and, and you've been a, a leader, not just in the appliance world, but just a leader as a woman owned business. Right. And so you were telling a story about a trade show you went nationally. Talk, yes. talk a little bit about that. So um, everybody knows the Sub-Zero um, Wolf Corporation. Um, they are the you know, beautiful refrigeration. And uh, they were having an event um, for the dealers in Wisconsin, family-owned business mm -hmm. and going into their fourth generation. Mm -hmm. And um, and it was no spout no spouses. It was a it was a launch of their new dishwasher, mm -hmm. and um, so only the dealers or decision makers, and this was only a few years ago, and um, just. You know, quick story is that I get there, it was just luxury, first class, find me first class, I get there, and at the event, I looked around, there was about 110 dealers there. Mm. I was the only woman wow. dealer wow. in the entire, wow. and these are dealers from all over the country, mm -hmm. from also from Mexico, some from Canada mm. as well. And we are, the and, and, and Sub-Zero is technically only sold through the independent channel, so you, you won't see them in most, you know, big box stores, right, right. Um, and uh, so these are mostly family businesses. Right, right, right. Second and third generation right, family businesses right. around the country. Mm -hmm. So you know there are daughters. Right. There are mothers. There, right. there are sisters. Mm -hmm. um, there are cousins, mm -hmm. and I was. Uh, it was. I mean, I knew there were only a few women owners. But it, it really hit home at yeah. that event. Yeah. And um, it was a beautiful event. But I wanted to just, after that, I really wanted to get out there and try to, because you have to encourage, right. you can't start when they're seniors in high school. Right, right. You have to start really showing them. I, I had a gift with mm -hmm. my grandmother being who she was. My right. mother was right. also um, involved. So, and my, my children have two girls are 26 so you know they have a gift of seeing that legacy but a lot of girls don't right. have that you know role models mm -hmm. in their family and um and, and it's influence too again influence. I, I wrote my book and tell exactly. influence in my consulting practices around this influence and that it's not that people are born one of they're not born entrepreneurs they're influence and so it's important to to influence right. Young women, and from a business standpoint, one of the show, one of the one of the family businesses that we'll have on later is a sixth-generation business in Newark um, that has done manufacturing, 
and the daughters are kind of next in line, and they're actually expanding it to cosmetics. So they're, they're helping the business survive because of the innovation right. that they have. And if you're not innovating, you're not surviving. Right. That's been your secret to success Correct. is really innovating and thinking differently. Reinvesting. Reinvesting. Yeah. But also reinvesting in things that other people, you know, other people wouldn't, wouldn't think about. Right. And that's, that's critically right. important. Right. Right. Um, you know, before, and again, time always goes quickly on these. You know, one of, the, one of the most meaningful things I've seen for small businesses when we were working together years ago, that you had such a national presence <clears throat> that the head of the, I think it was a Republican head of one of the congressional committees and the Democratic head of one of the Senate came to your store did, to really yes. talk a little bit about that. And, and, and uh, tell, tell me about that. So, um, so they came to the store. They were having a, you know, for, you know, to uh, uh, make some changes in, in the taxes. And um, now this was the Internet the taxes or yes. for the Internet yeah, taxes? Yeah, and, and, and you led the fight here yes, in New Jersey. Yes, and, yes. and say a little bit about that. Yeah. So, um, you know, so they came to the store and they really wanted to, um, you know, hear it from the trenches. Mm -hmm. And and I, again, because of the presence that we had mm -hmm. um, nationally through social mm -hmm. um, and um, that, uh, you know, they they really got to see you know they came to the store and we brought the our our um, accountant right, right. who answered a lot of questions mm -hmm. and um, it, I mean it was amazing mm -hmm. I mean mm -hmm. it was it's amazing um, they they could really see that um, that it was a uh, uh, a challenge for us. Um, and, and let's they, explain doing... for the audience. That, that, so, so the challenge was that you can buy an appliance on the internet in some places, and you didn't have to pay taxes. But you go to your store, and you have to pay taxes. Right. And, and that's right. just an unfair advantage. Right. And so you really fought it, that on behalf of small business. It, it was. It was. It was a little bit of that. Right. But it was also about how difficult mm -hmm. it was to for our for companies like ours to do our income tax ourselves right right you know right. because it was so difficult that we would right. have to go and hire so, so the bureaucracy on top of it and in order to really do it correctly Perfect. and successfully Excellent. and um and and they were trying to simplify right. you know the taxes so there was a little bit of both you yeah. know um, but, but the fact that, that out of all the businesses in the country they were coming to you and so yes. unfortunately i i see we're, we're winding up now and so it's just been such a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to speak to you, a friend, and, and maybe one of these days we can do the show yeah, in your yo, store. Yes, yes, and yes. And so, yes. Um, so as I say to the audience, so uh, you know, I, I hope you've enjoyed our first show. Our, our, our focus is to really support and celebrate family businesses, and hope that you will shop family-owned next time you think about spending your money. So thank you very much. I hope you uh, uh, have a wonderful day, and please watch Family Business World uh, again. Have a good one.